Welcome to BIMStorm Data Independence. Today's session is on cloud-based BIM creation and model checking. This is Kimon Onuma of Onuma Inc. and Chair of Thought Leadership for the Building Smart Alliance. Today we have in Vicara and BIMAsure, uh, Brian Smith, AJ Bridewell, and Marty Chabot. AJ helped to set up a lot of the um, demonstration files and BIMs uh, that we're going to be seeing. Uh, Marty will be introducing uh, BIM Assure and uh, Brian will be walking us through a live uh, demonstration uh, of uh, BIM Assure. Uh, I'd like to thank Invicara for being part of these uh, series of webinars and uh, BIMStorm and being a sponsor and being very active in the um, actual working with the, uh, the BIM files and the data. So one housekeeping um, thing here is that we are going to be taking uh, questions from the audience. If you open up your uh, GoToWebinar panel on the right, there's a questions interface. And if you open that up, you can actually type in the question. And we will be responding to the questions at the very end of the webinar. We'll try and get through as many as possible. And uh, please uh, type them in as you have a question that comes up, and we'll be tracking them throughout the webinar. We will not be opening up uh, audio for the participants. Uh, um, we'll just be taking questions through the question box. So a little bit of background. Uh, some of you have been part of these webinars and BIMStorm uh, webinars, but we've had uh, participation from um, um, several owners. Um, specifically, the Department of Veterans Affairs has opened up their data for uh, program requirements that we have been using. Uh, from the SEPs to BIM pro, uh, uh, tools that uh, Department of Veterans Affairs and Department of Defense Military Health System use. And Solano Community Colleges has been uh, opening up their data as well, and you'll see a little bit more of that. Uh, we have supporters uh, throughout the industry. Other industry organizations like the Asset Leadership Network and the uh, Building Smart Alliance have supported us in uh, um, broadcasting out uh, that we are working on this BIM storm. And of course, all of our sponsors that have ma helped make this BIM storm uh, free for the participants. So you can actually participate for free and get access to a lot of great tools and actual real data uh, from projects uh, due to the support from the sponsors. And each of these sessions where we've been going through different themes of uh, owner rec owners rec perspectives, the AEC industries perspective, and then even app developers of how you would actually develop applications. And you'll see a lot of this uh, already on the website. If you go to bimstorm.com, you can actually see a lot of these uh, use cases and workflows that we have documented over the past several months. And we plan to continue with this uh, going into 2017. We're going to be shifting gears into a new year, but there's a lot of really great material, not only presentations, but actual data and BIMs and tools that have been made available to the participants that sign up for the BIMStorm. So you've, today you've signed up for the webinar, obviously, but we encourage you to join the BIMStorm uh, at BIMStorm.com to get access to these tools and data. So the theme has been data independence, and that's a very important part of the series of webinars, is that we obviously, each of us has a different perspective of how we work in a project, whether it's design and construction or even all the way into operations from an owner's perspective. And we need that data to flow regardless of which tools we use. We've been focusing a lot on agile and uh, cloud-based systems and also the interface with uh, the full-blown uh, design and construction BIMs. So there's, there's no wrong answer as far as what tools to use. It's more about how can we maximize the value of the data flowing from end to end uh, using established open standards like have been developed with uh, Building Smart International, Building Smart Alliance, and other standards organizations. Uh, Asset Leadership Network has been involved very heavily. And we are not only talking about this, how this is possible, we're actually using the BIMSTORM as an uh, opportunity to demonstrate here's how you actually do it. Uh, here are some of the tools that you can use. Here's the actual BIMs and the data that go along with them, and you can try it yourself. So today's session, we're going into the, um, the model checking process a little bit and, and more in detail. And what's interesting about that, when we started these uh, BIMStorm uh, 
um, webinars, we focused a lot on some owners are now starting to put their data out in the cloud even, in, including the Department of Veterans Affairs and DOD uh, program requirements that come out from the Space and Equipment Planning System, SEPS, and the SEPS to BIM process where you can actually get real data from these owners uh, and uh, move that data into BIM. And as you move their data through the process, obviously you need to check the the quality of the design and are you matching their requirements and how's the BIM uh, progressing and that's what BIM Assure is going to be demonstrating today of how one of these tools and there are other ways to check data obviously but we're going to be focusing today on the BIM Assure tools and showing you how this process actually works in uh, their workflow. So we encourage you to join the BIMStorm if you go to BIMStorm.com there's a join button you hit the join button and you get access to um, uh, logins and information of how you get access to BIM Assure and the uh, NUMA system tools and other plugins for like Revit and ARCHICAD and SketchUp and all the demonstrations that we've had uh, just by um, participating. So one update uh, uh, from um, one of the owners, the Solano Community Colleges, as I we presented in the previous webinars, is uh, uh, part of the California Community College uh, system, which has uh, 2.4 million students statewide and 70 something, 73 campus, uh, 73 districts, and over 110 campus sites throughout the states with uh, 5,000 buildings. So it's a massive uh, database of their facilities. And Solano is using um, BIM to not only uh, get deliverables from a design and construction project, but also for facility management and operations, uh, work orders, preventive maintenance. And they have a new building, a biotech building, um, which is under construction right now. And we uh, have helped them set up um, the uh, data on how it gets delivered back uh, to the owner, which is based a lot on the projects that um, were run through with the uh, National Institute of Building Sciences for the SEPS to BIM and the uh, IFM, Fed IFM projects of how data moves throughout the life cycle. Um, so there are um, templates that have been set up uh, for data to be handed back to the owner in structured format like Kobe uh, that can then be um, um, pulled into the operational side of how this owner, um, James Buchanan, who presented as well, for the director of facilities at Solano Community Colleges, how they want to manage their, their buildings. Um, there are BIM and data deliverables documents that were set up, and uh, that's how these files uh, and models have been formatted now for ready for delivery of data from the design and construction process. Um, and these uh, Excel files can then be imported back into the facility management applications to and out to Kobe. And we demonstrated this before. So uh, an update. This has actually uh, happened even last week. Uh, I went up to visit the biotech building. And, and uh, James Buchanan was there and helped, walked us through uh, the process of what they're doing at the Community College District, how this building is actually very unique. Uh, it's uh, for a four-year program at the uh, Community Colleges. Uh, it's a very unique program for biotech, which is in high demand uh, um, right now as far as uh, students um, graduating from biotech programs. So this is their building under construction, uh, slated to be completed in July. A lot of great... Uh, impressive technologies and obviously there's laboratories and clean rooms and all kinds of stuff a lot of equipment in the building um, and as we were walking through we had 19 minutes actually inside the building we actually clocked it because we were tagging photographs from the building into these mobile applications um, there were um, 112 photographs that were documented uh, and uploaded in real time to the, the server and this is the model that's being shared with the BIMStorm participants so this is the actual design and construction that's happening right now with the actual model with additional data being collected uh, in real time as we walk through the building we basically captured uh, what we saw uh, and tagged it to the room and now it's part of the uh, the BIM deliverable in Kobe that, that could go back so we're, we're actually using this as a real laboratory as part of the BIM storm process and the goal is for data consistency so the data independence theme of uh, BIM storm is uh, being reinforced here. Uh, obviously a lot of standards that are out there that are being used and uh, for BIM and uh, web standards and then the web services and the APIs that uh, help this data to flow uh, from end to end. 
So it's actually possible to do it, especially with these new tools that are out there right now with mobile devices. It's becoming much easier to collect data in the field, for example. There's a lot of great tools out there to do that. And it's not a difficult thing to do to deliver data in a Kobe format, for example. A lot of uh, angst we hear sometimes when Kobe is complicated or whatever. It's really just a list of stuff and a list of stuff that gets tagged to a place in the building, a room in the building that again, then gets tagged to an ID that then can flow into the facility management application. So it's, it's absolutely not rocket science. It's the kind of data that already gets delivered from the AEC industry and um, schedules, for example, and uh, we were able to demonstrate that. So SEPS to BIM, if you go to SEPS to BIM.org, this is the VA and DOD healthcare um, program requirements and data that's available online that we use for the BIM storm. And VA has been publishing their new BIM guidelines and standards for SEPS to BIM as well, where you can actually see on their website how owner requirements from uh, VA make their way into the model. And that's what uh, BIM Assure is actually have, has been using, a model that was generated from VA data requirements for spaces and equipment. So here's a clinic, uh, 25,000 square feet with um, 80 spaces and thousands of pieces of equipment and attributes about what the characteristics are of that space. Uh, with the uh, Invicara BIM Assure team, we actually went through a back and forth of moving data from SEPS to BIM into Onuma, into Revit, into SketchUp, and then the uh, uh, BIM Assure team took, took, took it into Revit and into their tools, which they will be showing next. So the, the main message here is that the owner requirements made their way all the way through diff many different tools and all the way into the model checking that you'll be seeing today. So with that, I'd like to have uh, Marty and Brian, who will be presenting and talking today, introduce what BIM Assure and Invicara does. And I want to, again, thank them for being sponsors and for being so actively involved in the BIM storm. And that's the key thing with the BIM storm. It's not just only to watch what's going on. You can actually get your hands into uh, the models and the data, and uh, uh, Marty and Brian and AJ have been great at helping us make that uh, go forward. So, uh, guys, if you're ready, uh, we'll switch over to your screen, to Marty first, I believe. Yes, uh, great. Thank, thanks a lot, Kamen. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is Marty Chobot with Invicara. Um, I also, I come from the FM software side of the house, so I'm familiar with a, a lot of the data that my customers uh, would get from design and construction. And it's, it's exciting to see things like the BIM storm. It's exciting to see what's going on at places like Solano, um, where a richer, more useful data set is, is being built for customers. And, and with Invicar, we're really excited to participate because we can play a great role in making sure that those owner requirements are being followed, right? Uh, especially with the explosion of information and the, the increasing sophistication. You, you talked about SEPs, um, the VA's requirements, SEPs to BIM. Um, there's a number of, of owners, both at the federal government, private industry. Um, we're seeing a lot of healthcare, a lot of higher ed uh, customers looking for ways to not just get BIM, but get the BIM that they need. And, and that's really what BIM Assure is, is all about. So I want to take just a few seconds to give you a quick overview of BIM Assure, and then I'm going to hand it off to Brian for the training. Um, so as, as Kamon mentioned, BIM Assure is a model checker. It's cloud-based. It's collaborative. Um, we let you publish models and data up into a BIM Assure project, uh, and then there are rules in BIM Assure that you run against the data, that you run against those model elements. And those rules can find missing information. They can find information that doesn't meet your expectations. And, and there's a number of, of things that we can check, right, to, 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 to see if it meets your expectations. Is it, uh, is it, pat is it unique? Is it in a certain pattern? Uh, is it a valid value from a list? That sort of thing. And Brian will go into that in much more detail. So that's really the gist of it. It's very simple. And then the workflow. Um, just to, to give you a, a 60,000 foot view before we dive into it, um, is, is really quite simple as well. So it starts in the BIM authoring tools. Um, we have, uh, we worked with Kamon, we got a copy of the SEPS clinic model 
um, that he's been using in the BIM storm. Um, we took that, we published it. Um, so you publish from your BIM authoring tool uh, up into a BIM Assure project. And, and a project has been set up for every BIM, uh, BIM storm participant uh, uh, that's registered so far. So we publish into the project, and then at that point, that's when you can run the rules, you can find issues. Um, really, anyone can be given access to that information that, that, um, that you would like to give access to. So it's a great way of sharing data and sharing access to models. Um, and in addition to the finding of the issues, you can also fix uh, a good number of those issues up in the cloud as well, too. So it's not just model checking, but there's also uh, some data management tools that we provide as well. And then ultimately, and for the BIM storm workflow, this is important, you can sync any changes or you can sync a list of issues back down into the BIM authoring tool. Okay? So in the case of Revit, in our add-in, you'll see a list of uh, any updates, you'll see a list of any issues that were found. Um, you, can, you can pull those data changes back down into your model. Um, if, if it's something that hasn't been fixed or couldn't be fixed in BIM Assure, for example, we don't let you change the dimensions of model elements that could create chaos, that would be bad. Uh, but, but you get a punch list essentially inside uh, of Revit and you can use Revit's internal tools to fix the issue. Then when you're done with fixing all the issues, then your model is ready for whatever downstream purpose. In the case of the BIM storm, it's pushing it over into facility management and, and getting it over to the owner so that they can do what they need to do with it. A little bit about uh, BIM Assure and the BIM storm, just to let folks know um, what's available here. Um, you have unlimited access to BIM Assure for use during the BIM storm with the BIM storm uh, models and data. Um, you, uh, you can uh, basically use, we've created some templates uh, for you based on the SEPS to BIMS requirements, as Kamen mentioned. So those templates will be available in your uh, private BIM Assure project. Um, uh, you can actually create your own rules. So once you're in there, if you're if you're interested and you want to push the product a little bit further, you can start working and, and creating your own rules as well. Um, they, but all of the capabilities of BIM Assure are available to you uh, as, a, as a BIM Storm participant. Um, we are also offering free access to our open training classes. We have classes twice a week, uh, one, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesdays and Fridays, so those are available to you as well. Um, Brian's going to give you uh, a quick overview today. Um, an introduction, if you will, but these classes are available if you'd like to take a deeper dive. Now, if you are a BIM Storm participant, you should have already received an invitation email, and we have uh, we were just checking, Brian and I, the other day. A number of people have already logged in, and, and some people are already running rules and, and using the product, which is great. Um, if you aren't a BIM Storm excuse me, participant, as Kamone mentioned, go to the BIMSTORM site, um, register there. Uh, once you've registered as a BIMSTORM participant, um, uh, Kamone will then let us know and we'll, we'll set up an account and a project for you and send you an invite. Now, um, sometimes these uh, system-generated invitations will get caught by spam or junk email filters. So if you haven't seen the email and you're a BIMSTORM participant, you can search through uh, Here's the subject line to look for and the from. Um, try to find it. If you have trouble, just let us know. Send us an email or contact Kamon, and uh, we will work to get you set up. Okay. Now, last step, and then I'll hand it over to Brian. Uh, once you've logged in, you've created your user account, um, you will have access by default to the BIMSTORM project. It'll look like this, uh, or the account, I should say. Once you click through into that BIMSTORM account, you'll see your project. So every firm that's a participant in uh, BIMSTORM has their own project. It's uh, accessible only to you. Uh, and uh, you'll see your project, um, which has the sample models already published, the templates already available, so you're, you'll be ready to hit the ground running. And that's it for me. All right, very good. Um, as everyone has mentioned, my, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm on the application services side here at, at Invacar, focused in BIM Assure. And my primary role is really to 
um, help organizations develop the analyses that they that they need in order to accomplish their their goals. Um, where we are right here, and just kind of picking up right from where Marty left off, is once uh, you have received your invitation and you've gotten logged into BIM Assure and you've um, clicked on your account, that's kind of where Marty left there, this is um, what you'll see. You'll see a project in BIM Assure. The project that we have in, in everyone's uh, account is the SEPS Clinic project, and we, we touched on this a little bit uh, in, the, in the previous webinar. Um, but what I wanted to do today is so for, for those that have, are, are anxious to kind of get started and they've got, you know, you've, you've gotten your invitation and you've logged in, it's, it's what do I do now? So this won't be a complete training uh, to, answer, to answer all the questions or to go into great detail on some of the other features, but what we are going to do is, is hit the steps of the overall workflow. And so we'll, we'll start here. Um, if you want to create a separate project in BIM Assure with some of your own models, you can certainly uh, do that by, by creating a, uh, another project. Um, we're going to focus in on the SEPS project here, though. And, you know, going back to the overall workflow, once, once you have a project that's uh, created, you want to get your, your BIM into BIM Assure. And the first steps to do that is you'll want to go up and grab the plugin from this little plugin tab up here at the uh, upper right hand corner for the offering platform. And, and again, as Marty pointed out, we're, we're focusing Revit uh, for, for this and for the time being. Once you click on the plugin link, you'll see a listing of all the versions of Revit that we support. So 2014 through 2017. And you'll uh, download the plugin. And while Revit is not running, uh, run the, the, the plugin script and it will uh, get that installed and, and add it to, to Revit. And uh, so uh, I'll switch over to Revit here really quick. So this is what, uh, this is what you'll see. And this is actually the, uh, the SEPS model here um, that, you, that you've seen and you, we, we've been working with. And if this is the model that I'm ready to publish to BIM Assure, uh, notice uh, one thing in particular, we're in a 3D view here, so you have to be in a 3D view. That's something to note. And I'll go up to our add-ins tab to get the add-ins ribbon. And what I'm looking for is the open panel for BIM Assure. And this will open up a, uh, the, the, the dialogue or the plugin for for BIM Assure, uh, it'll ask you for your credentials. You see this automatically uh, logged me in because I was logged in previously. And it's taken me right to our account. And you will see uh, the projects that you have access to inside the, the plugin. You'll highlight the, uh, the project and you just simply hit the upload file to selected project um, button. And it will take your model and we'll package it up and push it into uh, the cloud into your BIM Assure uh, account and project that you, that you specified. And then so from there, and I'll just return back to BIM Assure, uh, your model will um, just be displayed within your project and then you can kind of continue through the workflow. Um, to get started here, I'm going to click on this particular model. You can see uh, if we had multiple models, you know, there would be more of these model cards that are here. This gives us some uh, general information about this, who loaded it, when it was loaded, uh, if there are multiple versions of this particular model. And I'll click on the card. It will take me to uh, a dashboard of sorts about this model. And we'll get into more detail on this, but the, think of this as almost like a, uh, a, a dashboard or, um, you know, an overview of the analyses and the results of the rules that are, that are run on this. But even before we, we talk about that in, in more depth, I'm going to switch over to the 3D view. So I'm up here in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to click on 3D view. And this will take us to the 3D view 
of this um, the model that we would have just published to to Ben Shore. So uh, just kind of looking at the bottom here, we've got your your typical uh, navigation capabilities. So we can orbit, zoom, and pan, and, and walk through the model. Um, no, if you if you ever get kind of turned around or, or lost within your model, you can always hit the home button, and it's going to return you to the to the home location. So if I have uh, navigated to some place and I need to go back to home, I can always hit the the home button to take me back. Um, you know, during our normal training sessions, we actually go through a little more detail on what some of the other features are on the on the navigation toolbar. Uh, but a lot of these are, are pretty straightforward and intuitive. Um, and uh, you'll notice that when we start to navigate through or if we see an element that we want some more information about, for example, maybe it's this wall here. If I click on the wall to where it highlights, and then I click on the little properties button that pops up when I when I highlight something, now I can start to see all the data that's associated with that wall that came over from Revit. And you'll see that we can see both the instance uh, parameter information, so the instance properties and the type properties. Uh, I know what family this came from, the basic wall family. I know which type this was uh, within that family, the exterior brick on metal stud uh, type. And then I can start to drill down and I can see see the, uh, both the property or the parameter and the value as well as its type. So all of the uh, different information that you see, information types, are it's either really going to be Boolean information, so true or false, or, or checkbox. It's either checked on or off. Uh, it could be numerical information or it can be text information here. So that kind of defines um, what the information types are and then we'll uh, lead into what types of rules that we can that we can run on this type of information. So again, you can start to kind of navigate through. You can see uh, the different information that's associated to to this particular element uh, in the model, uh, both instance and type information. So now you know that, and that's the information that we're going to focus in on uh, for for BIM Assure. So I'm a go back here and go and take a look at the different analyses that are associated with this particular project. Um, on our analyses tab up here at the top, I can see a listing of all of the analyses that are available to me uh, in my account. And as I start to pick through here, I can see what rules are associated with each analysis. So really an analysis is nothing more than a group of rules that um, we can configure in different ways that are going to give us, uh, you know, different uh, different results. So, for this very first analysis here, you can see that it's called the BIM storm room check. So our rules are going to be a little more specific to room elements, and you can see by the names of the different rules, we're going to check to make sure that. Uh, number one, a room area is not blank. Then we're going to check that the program area uh, pr property is, is populated. We're going to check that uh, the phase is set to new construction. We're going to make sure that none of the names are blank and kind of read through here and see what each of these different rules are doing. Um, if I dive in just a tiny bit deeper and look at the rule details, you'll see how this particular rule is configured. So this particular rule that's looking for the room area is not blank. It's going to look at our room elements that came from Revit, and it's going to make sure that that value exists. So it's just a, making sure that there's information in that particular uh, property. We can also make sure, if I look over here, that uh, you know, check all finishes are, are populated. You can see that this is going to look at our room elements again, and it's going to check to make sure that the wall finish, the ceiling finish, uh, here's the list, the floor finish and the base finish all have values in it. And if, if any one of these criteria is not met, then it's going to flag that room and tell us that uh, 
hey, there's there's an issue with with one of this uh, with one of these criteria. Um, you know, one more to take a look at here. This particular rule uh, is going to look at all of our room elements to make sure that the room number is unique. So if there are two rooms that have the same room number, uh, it's going to flag that for us and, and let us know so that we can we can make the proper uh, adjustments. So uh, that's kind of an overview of what an analysis is and then uh, the different uh, rules that are associated with, with this analysis. And um, if we wanted to create a new analysis, we would just click our new analysis button, and you'll see that you can create a blank analysis and you can populate all the rules yourself, or you can start with one of our built-in templates and you can click on a, uh, a template that already has some rules in it and then you can either use those rules exactly how they are, or you can make adjustments to those uh, rules that are going to be better suited for your particular project. Um, so you'll see a listing of all the base templates that we have. Uh, Kimon mentioned Kobe earlier, so we do have a series of uh, analyses that would evaluate elements to make sure that the proper uh, Kobe um, properties are, are filled out in in the format that they're supposed to be filled out uh, within. So we have a, a bunch of rules that are going to look at um, uh, elements, more element-based here, uh, all the way down to more industry-specific or discipline-specific. So uh, the architectural Kobe check, for an example, has nearly 50 rules in it. They're going to check you know, all the architectural type elements to make sure they they meet the cri your criteria. Um, if we uh, just want to add a rule to an analysis, or if we wanted to make an adjustment here, uh, I can add a new rule, and I can either create a new rule from a definition, or I can pull in a rule from one of the existing uh, analyses. So that same listing of analyses that uh, we were looking at before, I can I can grab one of those and use that as my starting point. So maybe I want to grab some rules from for doors and some for stairs and some from rooms and put them all into one analysis. I can I can do that um, from our definitions, and I certainly won't go through all of those, but uh, we have 24 different um, uh, definitions for our rules. You can almost think of those as as almost like operands. So uh, if I'm looking at uh, this little group here, first maybe I want to check to make sure that a property exists. Was this was this parameter ever even in the element inside Revit? Um, I can make sure that the that there's a value associated with that uh, property. You know, it not not checking to see what the value is at this point. I just want to make sure that there's a value in it that's not blank. Um, I can check to make sure that a property value is equal to a specific value. Um, maybe I want to make sure that all of my uh, phasing is set to new construction, for an example. So I would check the uh, the phase to say that it equals new construction. Um, I can check to make sure that a property value uh, matches one of the values on a list or multiple values. So you know maybe we have um, windows in our in our model. We want to make sure that you know according to spec that you know, all the windows were either Anderson windows or Pella windows. So I can check and create a rule that would look at the manufacturer to make sure that it's one of those two values. If it's blank or if it's not one of those values, then it would flag it and, and fail that so it sort of bring it to our attention. Uh, I can make sure property values within a particular range. I can make sure that the property value is unique. I can make sure that it matches a particular pattern. So for some of our naming criteria, I want to make sure that uh, you know it follows a specific uh, pattern. You know, um, maybe a, a, a you know, it, it, yeah. Again, so it would match. Um, you know, uh, maybe our room naming you know has a, a specific way that everything has to be called out. It's going to start with a letter. It's going to have a dash, and then it's um, then it's going to have another value. So we can make sure that it matches that criteria. 
So that's a real quick overview of the different types of rules that we have and what the different rules uh, uh, do for us. Um, so once an analysis has been created and we populated this analysis with, with the rules that we want to accomplish, we can then go back to our model and we can tell this model which analyses that we want to attach to it. So uh, in some cases, we may have you know, uh, broken out models per discipline. We may have an architectural model, a mechanical model, uh, an electrical model, plumbing model. And even that with the full list of, of analyses that we have, I would probably only want to associate the, the architectural focus analyses to an architectural model. Uh, if this were a mechanical model, I would probably uh, attach the mechanical analyses to that, none of the architectural. So we, we have the ability to hone in and say, this model is going to uh, have these particular analyses associated with it. Um, once we've attached the analyses to the model, then we can run the analysis. And uh, you know, here's the list of all of the analyses that are attached. And then we can tell it to, to run the selected um, the, the analyses. And that at that point, kind of behind the scenes, then there'll be a bunch of computers out in the, com in the cloud with uh, lights flashing and, and running all those different rules. So, you know, back to this kind of dashboard, this is kind of a high level overview of the results of this particular analysis. So, for the BIM storm room check that we kind of dug into and was looking at some of the rules. It's telling us that there was a total of 14 rules that made up that analysis. Ten of those rules had some element that failed or didn't pass that criteria. So Ten of the 14 had some failing rules within it. And that affected 219 elements um, you know, in this architectural model. So again, in the uh, room content, analysis, there was only two rules. One of those had some failings and there was only one element that, that failed. Um, you know, this analysis down here that says to check the architectural properties has eight rules and it didn't have any failures in it. So these issues have already been either it was uh, created properly to begin with or these issues were addressed and now all of these um, particular rule results all, all pass 100%. So we get a, a nice, clean, green um, uh, indication here. No more work is, is necessary. Um, when I dig in a little farther on the results of analysis, so again, let's look at our BIMSTORM room check. If I click on the View Issues link here, it's going to navigate back to our model viewer, so it's back on our 3D view, um, but within our uh, navigator here, it's taking us right to the issues, it's taking us right to the BIMA storm room check analysis, and then here's the listing of the 14 rules that were associated with that analysis and their results. So checking to make sure that the room area is not blank, of the 58 rooms that it found within this model, one of the rooms has an area uh, where the value is blank. And if I uh, twirl down the, the little indicator here on the left, here is the room that um, failed this particular rule. And if I click on the um, properties here, a couple things just happened that it would have highlighted this particular room. I'll turn on our transparency mode back here. And it's, uh, but since it couldn't find this room, it's just kind of, um, uh, it's within it's within the model, but since there's no uh, area that's associated with it, it's almost like an orphan room. So this is something that we would definitely want to go back and and find out what's going on in, inside Revit. Um, but you know, it's flagged that that hey, this doesn't meet our our criteria. Uh, if I'm looking at uh, check phase for new construction, I can see the 58 rooms here that it was looking at that they're all set to be a uh, new new construction. Uh, none of the room names were blank. All of the room numbers were unique. So it passed these particular rules. Um, if I'm kind of skipping around though, it's, this one is, is checking for all the finishes. 
And if I uh, drill down here and start to look, you know, it took me right to that particular room. And what this is showing us is that none of the finishes have been filled out for the uh, wall finish, the ceiling finish, the floor finish, or the base finish. So this would be an opportunity if we if we knew this information, we could go ahead and key this information in right here in BIM Assure, um, whatever your your particular uh, finish codes are, and um, you know we you know that this is how we can actually start to get the data into the model that uh, maybe wasn't there to to begin with and start to make some of these corrections. Um, so that's what these. Uh, particular results would look like. Let's go look at some of the other rules. Uh, this is telling us that for the space code that's supposed to be in here that we're expecting to see that 15 of the rooms, 15 of the 58 rooms didn't have that. Uh, the space code name, the project function area, you know, some of these other values aren't um, there. Uh, let's pick on this one. Check department value matches a list. So if I expand that, it's telling us that five of our rooms does not have a, a department value. So here's a mechanical space. If I click on the properties for that, again, it takes us right to this mechanical space. Um, it's telling us that you know this did not have the property um, you know for uh, for the department filled out. I can fill this in here. I can type in that this is a mechanical space. And when I click the uh, check mark, I get an indication. A little green dot here tells me that you know we've updated this particular you know, this uh, element with the correct information now. And I would be able to go through the the other areas, uh, maybe this elevator as an example, and maybe this is a, a common area. And so I'll check that. And now we've adjusted this particular property. And we would go through this process until you know we've either filled in all the information, um, maybe we've you know we're collaborating with another group on this particular rule, and we're going to pass this over to to another group. Um, we'll give them access to this project. They can log in, see the issues. They can go through the list and make this uh, adjustment because they are the ones with that um, uh, particular uh, knowledge. So at the end of the process, so we've, we've looked at what our different analyses were, what our different rule types were. We've uh, applied the analysis to uh, a model, and we've run the analyses. We've seen the results for this. Now we can go back to our Revit model, and we can sync those changes back. So when I go in and, and look at our, um, our panel, the, uh, the little exclamation point here says, hey, there's been some analyses run on this model, and there's been some changes. And so I can now download those particular changes, still using the, uh, the, the plug-in here. And BIM Assure is now passing down the results of all those analyses that, that we saw before, and uh, gives, us, gives us access to that right inside Revit in this particular uh, session. So from here, move this so we can see a little better. From here, we can see that hey, there was a room, uh, the elevator room was modified. That department that we just just now modified, uh, the original value when this was published uh, was blank. So when, when this model was first published up to BIM Assure for analysis, there was no information in here. Uh, the current value, you know, if someone has been working on this particular model, um, they may have populated this so I can see what's in the model right now. And then I can also see what the value was changed to in BIM Assure. So this is the edited value. And, you know, I can go through here now, and if I uh, apply all these edits to the model, then it would take what's ever in the edited value column and make it my current value. If this is something that I did not want to sync back to Reddit, I would just uncheck the box. So I don't want to check this. Uh, maybe this is misspelled, I, you know, what, what have you. Whatever reason that we would not want to sync it back, the important part is, is we have control over that. 
So it's not just going to automatically pull down all the values. It would give you the opportunity to, to look at these first before you sync the information back. So I'll go ahead and hit Apply Selected Edits to Model. Now you can see that my current value has been updated. And you know, now if I were to go to that specific uh, element, it would show us that you know, this is the new value within that uh, department. Um, we also have the, the rest of the information, all the things that were not changed. that will develop that, that list just like we saw in Vim Assure and allow you to, to go right into the element and, and make additional changes. So I think I'm right at the end of my uh, time segment here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pass the ball back um, to, to you, Kamon. And um, then, you know, if you have questions, certainly you would then uh, entering those questions, and we can we can answer those as we start to to wrap here. Great, thank you very much. That was that was great to see uh, in detail like that. Um, and um, we have some questions that have been coming in. I'll give you guys a minute or so to digest them, and maybe you can come back, uh, Marty. I think you've been looking at the questions, and we'll we'll jump back into uh, the responses. Uh, a couple thoughts from from my side. Um, that I see here as very interesting is um, the fact that you're actually working in Revit and in the cloud uh, in BIM Assure uh, allows you to ha have a whole range of uh, participants, right? You can have people that are familiar with Revit and others that are using BIM Assure. Because we hear over and over again, owners that are becoming more sophisticated are wanting to see that their data is valid, right, as the model progresses. But a lot of owners don't have access to Revit or the full-blown BIM applications. Uh, and being able to check this not only at the end of the project, but as you go through the process, I think there are opportunities to basically report back and say, here we are, we're on track. Yes, we know that this uh, room has no value here, but we're going to keep on layering information in as we go through the design and construction process. And that's an important concept with this data. It doesn't all come at the end. It gets, it's living over time, starting all the way from the beginning when VA says we want a clinic like this with uh, spaces and equipment, and all of a sudden you're layering in more into Revit and the other BIM applications, and you're checking them in BIM Assure. Um, so that's exciting to see that. Um, so, um, Marty, do you want to address some of the questions that we see coming in? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, we had a few questions come in, and uh, uh, Brian, one of the th questions was, how do you manage conflicts if data has changed both in Revit and in BIM Assure? Well, that's, that's a really good one. And so like one of the, the last pieces that we, that we saw, um, it gives, a, or the plugin gives us the ability to see the value that's in the model right at that moment compared to what has been modified in BIM Assure. So if someone has entered the value uh, we would see that and would give us the opportunity to either update that to what was modified in BIM Assure or to yeah. leave it alone. So, okay. yeah, that's that's a really good question. So we, we have some control um, over what gets modified. Right. So, you know, we, we realize that modeling is not going to stop while um, the data is up in BIM Assure. So we, we give the modeler control. Uh, they can look and see what the original value loaded what's in the model now, and then what's what has been pulled down from BIM Assure so they can kind of triangulate on any conflicts and decide what, what the right information should be. Um, that's awesome. Um, there was a question about analysis templates. Um, who creates the, the analysis templates? Do, does MPICAR create templates? Can we create our own? Um, how does that work? Yeah, so we do have a set of base templates that's built into BIM Assure. And it's, it's kind of a generic cross-section that, that touches on many of the different elements uh, within the model. Um, but we also have templates like you saw, uh, the series of Kobe templates that were created, again, to use as a, as a template or a launching point uh, as well. So, yeah, there's a bunch that come out of the box. But then you can certainly create your own analyses, as we saw, and then save your own analysis as a template in BIM Assure just for your organization uh, that you can then use on different projects. 
So if I if I have an analysis and you know this is going to be my my handover analysis that's going to make sure that you know everything meets the the specs that that were given for a particular okay. owner, um, I can save that analysis as a template. So that the next project that I have, I can I can start with that, uh, use it the way that it is, or I can uh, make whatever tweaks to, to that. So, yeah, you get some analyses out of the box, but then you can certainly create your own analyses and add uh, rules to it, modify rules that that came from a template, uh, delete rules, or or add new rules. So, yeah, good good question. And and as we you know uh, for folks that uh, for our clients we also offer the ability to uh, you know obviously we want to teach you how to fish we want to give you the skills to build your own rules but if you need help we've got folks like Brian and folks on his team um, that are able to help you we'll work with you to to define those data requirements and kind of consult on how to how to best build the rules or can even provide the rules uh, build them as a service for you if, if necessary so. Um, the last question was about Kobe, and it may have come in before you showed the Kobe, Kobe templates. Um, you know, can you can you be can this be used to check Kobe or other handover methodologies? Um, so the answer is yes. <laughs> we uh, our current Kobe templates are tied to um, the Autodesk Revit Kobe plugin. Um, so if you're familiar with that plugin, you know that it it creates a, a number of parameters in the model. And uh, our templates are tied to those parameters uh, to make sure that the Kobe export that you get from that plugin has the data and, and the, the information that you need. So um, that was it for questions, come in, that came in from the audience. Okay. If great. anyone has an additional questions, you know, still feel free to, you know, the question uh, tab is right there on your control panel. Feel free to enter them in. Great. And if we get more, we're getting towards the end of the. Um session here and if we have more questions we'll try and follow up if there's something that uh, we haven't answered and um, so yeah thank you very much uh, like I mentioned I think this is a very interesting opportunity um, since you're in the cloud and, and you're working with Revit and a lot of the BIM storm workflows that we've been demonstrating is back from the cloud to the desktop back to the cloud that whole workflow it fits really nicely here to do the model checking uh, on the uh, requirement model that came from the owner of the clinic in this case. Um, and we, like we mentioned earlier, these models are being shared and made available to the BIM Storm participants. And the uh, BIM Assure tool, as well as other tools, are going to be made, are already accessible to the BIM Storm participants. So if you want to actually get in there and see how this works, that's the best way to actually learn um, what's possible and um, where this is all going as far as the capabilities here. Um, Okay, so if we move along here, there's just a few more slides. A reminder again, if you go to bimstorm.com, it's um, uh, a free sign up. You get access to the previous webinars and other material, as well as uh, get your name on the list to, to get access to these tools. And um, there's going to be more happening next year. We're actually planning on continuing this on into um, uh, uh, 2017. Um, and uh, we will be gathering in, in January, actually coming up in a few weeks here. Um, there's going to be a conference in Washington, D.C., uh, the National Institute of Building Sciences Conference. Uh, Building Smart Alliance, which I'm involved with as well, is going to have um, several sessions uh, there. Um, we will be um, uh, present at the conference, and I believe, uh, in Ricard, I'm sure you actually are, have a setup there as well, too, so if people want to get more of a one-on-one -on -one discussion going. You are going to be present there. Is that correct? That, that's right. We'll be we'll be there with you as well. That's great. Um, so into Jan into 2017, we're going to be um, uh, continuing on with the BIM storm. And uh, Marty, like you mentioned, there's some people that have already started to interact with the models. If people uh, jump into the BIM storm and start doing some workflows testing, we can actually even have you present back what's going on. That's our uh, hope in 2017 is participants can actually start collaborating and showing what you're doing uh, with BIM Assure and the other tools that we've presented throughout the BIM storm. Um, on um, the January conference, I will be, uh, this is Kimon again, I will be presenting uh, at a session called uh, Enabling Solutions for Healthcare Facilities. I'll be uh, talking about SEPS to BIM and other initiatives that have been happening with owners. 
this is a really interesting conference because it's a mixture of owners and industry and vendors and we're starting to hear more from these owners of what they're trying to achieve they obviously don't know all the right answers they, they know there's things out there and there's new workflows and processes but it's a good chance to hear directly from them what they're thinking and then um, uh, if you're a consultant or a vendor uh, to react to that and as part of the building smart alliance which all of us are involved with uh, in Vicara and Anuma and others uh, that are going to be presenting there, we're all obviously we're supporting the open standards and the um, the uh, work that's happening at Building Smart. And as thought leadership, we're also pushing very heavily this last year. Thought leadership at Building Smart Alliance, we're pushing very heavily on uh, what does the cloud mean? What are the cloud technologies out there? What about agile and mobile? Uh, what about security? That's always a big question. Okay, we're in the cloud. We want to share data, but we also want to protect it. Uh, right now, there's a lot of kind of gray zone in there. Okay, how do you share and protect it? It's it's not uh, mutually exclusive. You can actually do both, but you have to address it. And there's going to be a lot of discussions about that. Um, so, um, and even discussions about how do you use these tools. Uh, the question always comes up. Okay, we have tools in the cloud. How do government agencies start working with cloud-based tools. Um, the the knee-jerk reaction might be, well, nothing's possible because it's government, so they can't work in the cloud. That's absolutely not the case. Uh, uh, the SEPS to BIM example that I gave earlier uh, is in the cloud. This is DOD and VA requirement data that used to be distributed by CD and now is in the cloud on a server available as a web service. I'm getting a little technical here, which means that uh, cloud-based tools can tap directly into that. Uh, the, this government data, and that's going to that trend line, I believe, is going to uh, increase as far as the acceptance that there are ways to be on the cloud and protect the data. There are other uh, owners that are working through the National Institute of Building Sciences on projects that are thinking along those lines as well. So it's our chance as the industry and as technology and as consultants to show how we can fit into that. So with that, I think we're at the end of our webinar today. Uh, this has been Kimo Onuma from Onuma Inc., Thought Leadership Building Smart Alliance, Invicara BIM Assure Team, Marty, thanks to you and your team, Brian, thanks for the great presentation, AJ, who is not online and uh, has a, uh, is sick with a cold or something, um, thanks for setting up the files, and we look forward to uh, ramping this up in 2017 and getting more participation in the BIM storm. We have a lot of interest and a lot of activity happening, so... We're happy to share this with everybody uh, that has been participating. So we'll sign off. Any last words uh, from you guys? Thank you, Kamen. We appreciate the opportunity here. It's been uh, it's been great working with the BIMStorm. Yes, thank you very much. And we, we've recorded this session, and we'll be posting it on the BIMStorm site as well, too. Um, okay, great. Thank you, everybody, and we'll sign off. Thanks for joining BIMStorm Data Independence. <laughs>